different nonprofits, um, different um, faith uh, organizations across Middletown to and nonprofits as well as uh, residents to have the ability in, in the event of uh, tragedy or, or in, in the event of, of certain needs um, for the township along with our, our health department um, to uh, put together a um, a common, hopefully, what is an uncommon practice, but an efficient practice that will link um, folks, um, nonprofit groups that can help in certain times of need. I think uh, we, we've had a lot of conversations about this, and uh, I think it's uh, very important to try and launch off the ground uh, ahead of the holiday season, try and get them um, in order, and think it, this, this could be uh, one of the, the leading boards and commissions that we have in town to, to, to really um, help individuals that, that need it desperately. So I appreciate, we appreciate that. So we'll need, we'll, we'll need to do a, an ordinance to create the board and the structure of it, and we'll have to do appointments. So hopefully we can do that relatively soon, hopefully at the next meeting or shortly thereafter so we can get it up and running uh, before the end of the year. Um, and basically, the idea is sort of like a clearinghouse for assistance for the various issues that people have in their lives. And this community assistance network uh, would be ahead of any support that would be provided by the county. Uh, so it would get to them a lot faster than the county would. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's all the items that I have on the agenda for discussion. We have Township Committee comments. Thank you. I uh, just want to quickly say I thought Middletown Day was the, the best one I've ever been to, and I just want to thank all the sponsors. With that, uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Committee Man Hydell. We'll keep it up brief again. Middletown Day was great. Uh, we've been busy, a lot of community events. Uh, everything's been going well in the town and with us. Thank you. Committee Woman Snell. Yes, the Westminster. Presbyterian Church with Urban Hine collecting donations for Hurricane Florence victims. We were there. Um, they have a great thing going there with the cars pulling in, dropping off, and getting out. 
Um, also, um, we were at this weekend, the uh, went down over at Madison Fire Company, had a great time with the new truck. They're all very happy, so uh, those are the two. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Fury. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just to echo the comments of my colleagues, Middletown Day, uh, a thank you to all the staff and, and all the volunteers who made, uh, <coughs> once again, a wonderful Middletown Day, um, which is completely funded by private donations. Um, so thank you for all the hard work that went into that. Tony and Janet and everybody else involved. Um, I also would uh, just follow up on the comments of my colleague, Community Woman Snell, with respect to the Westminster Presbyterian Church and their drive to help the victims of the Hurricane Florence, I believe it was, yes. down in North Carolina. Um, shocked that there hasn't been more coverage of the damage, but I have actually spoken to a few people down there, and it has been it has uh, been some substantial damage about an hour north of Wilmington, and uh, I think believe they're open from seven to seven on a daily basis. So uh, I hope that all residents, um, especially still fresh in the mind, how everybody came to our uh, aid in 2012, will do the same for our brothers and sisters down the road. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, the only thing that I'll add uh, this evening is that uh, uh, just as a piece of uh, history uh, for, the, for the township, um, Committee Woman Perry and uh, Committee Woman Snell and I attended the, uh, uh, the Sandy Hook and Lighthouse um, re rededication, and it is officially the oldest uh, operating lighthouse in the country. Um, so it's important for people to understand that live in Middletown and the significance that the township plays uh, with regard uh, with regards to the region and the nation, uh, and I don't think a lot of people do. So uh, it was certainly enlightening to me to understand that, that information there on Sunday. So, uh, with that being said, um, I'll reserve the rest of my comments for the uh, public meeting, uh, and I do want to open up to um, public comments. Uh, a couple things uh, to remember: please um, uh, keep your comments to five minutes, and uh, please take your address for the record. So uh, that being said, is there anyone from the public that needs to be heard? Yes, ma'am. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, Mary Grant, 135 Lindy Lane in Lincroft. Um, I just wanted to first of all thank um, all of the candidates for um, signing on to do the um, candidates' night. Um, we were approved by. Um, the school district to use Lincroft School for the event, which is scheduled for Tuesday, October 23rd, from 7 to 9. We'll open the doors at 6.30, so all of the candidates, if you want, if you can come early, um, then you can mingle, meet some of the guests who will be there, introduce yourself to the moderator. Um, as in the past, the Lincroft Village Green um, Association has posted um, an on online form where people can um, submit questions and that will close <coughs> on October 19th in the evening and then we will filter through the questions and get them to the candidates so that you can kind of be prepared at least for the questions that are submitted online and then that evening um, the audience can also submit written questions to the moderator um, and she'll filter through those and ask those questions of you as well. Um, I think that's it on that. Um, and then I just wanted to um, follow up with you about some of the beautification projects. Um, I know we've been, you know, kind of going along, going along, trying to raise some money, and um, we have volunteers who are helping us with some of the design plans. Um, and so I have a very rough sketch that I'd like to show you. Um, we can do it now, or we can do it. Afterward, yeah, okay. yeah. Sure. Um, and so basically the number one thing that we will need from Ted and his staff is the old tired bushes would need to be pulled out before we can put anything new in and once those are the new plants are in then we can have garden irrigation finish up with um, the next phase of the irrigation um, system um, which by the way is Part of it is in in the circle, and that will be closed down. So, as a reminder, the LBGA is paying for the 
um, the, the opening and closing of the well and the irrigation system, um, which is scheduled. Both both systems will be uh, closed down on the 23rd. Easy to remember because it's the day of Kennedy's name. Um, and then we also have enlisted a volunteer um, who is a Lincroft resident, former Monmouth County Park System employee, um, who is a, an expert on grass, and he volunteered his time um, to plant more grass seed, um, which the township did in the spring. And he came and he did that, and we, and we paid for the grass seed. Um, and what else? Oh, then. Uh, not only are we planning the event on October 23rd, we're planning a fun free event at the Green um, on Thursday, October 18th for the kids in and around um, Lincroft, so Middletown residents, Lincroft residents, or the surrounding towns. Um, and we'll have um, a surprise guest who will be dressed as a jack-o'-lantern, do some photo ops, um, and games. So, uh, 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 Halloween parade around the circle, um, and so of course all of you are 18th. invited to come on the 18th. That's Thursday the 18th, and it's from 4:30 to 6. So it's an after-school activity, and we'll close up, you know, right. Costumes are optional. Costumes <laughs> are optional for adults, but uh, we hope we hope all the kids will um, will have their costumes on. Um, okay, that is it. Good question. The candidates for them, is it county candidates also? Oh, good question. No, we have only invited the Middletown candidates this year because there are six of you, and all six of you are um, confirmed to come. So it's just Middletown and not freeholders free this time. Um, yeah, any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Mary. Anyone else from the public wish to be heard? There's an X on the I'm here because uh, some of you might have Mr. seen you need to name just please. Sean Burns, 880 West Front. Thank you, sir. Um, there's an email circulating around which uh, the existence of it doesn't necessarily trouble me that much because I've been in this game long enough to know that these things go out. What troubled me a little bit about it was the, the, the scope number of e recipients. Um, the, uh, it seems like widespread uh, hitting across the, the township would suggest that whoever sent the email would have had access to a considerable amount of emails that were just middle kind of emails, which are not easy to get, especially accurate emails. You can go out and buy emails, but it's tough to get accurate emails. So those e emails went out, and I've, I've talked to some of the people who've gotten them. I've gotten emails from people who've gotten them. And many of them are uh, concerned and don't understand how whatever this organization, which is called, I think, Residents Against Overdevelopment or something like that, how they would have gotten the emails. Um, so I just want, I guess, A, assurances that no township information or records are being released you know, in, to any political parties or anyone associated with any political parties so that it can be used to address residents in this way. Because the content of the email is such that uh, there are familiar phrases in there, Hudson County politics and Essex County politicians supporting me and uh, things like that that I've certainly seen before. I think I've, and they've characterized me as being on the Murphy team. I think I've been on the Murphy team, the Obama team, the Corazine team over the years. <laughs> uh, so uh, it has a familiar ring to it, let's say, uh, the nature and the content of this particular email. So, um, I would just want, I guess, an assurance from everyone that nobody was associated with any, A, release of any data from the township emails, and B, um, if, in fact, there's a, if this is a party email, which, again, I don't listen, it's, you know, it's, it's not a pretty thing that we all play, but at least if it was coming from a party or a representative party or a candidate, they put their name to it. Because I've done a search, I can't find on Facebook or anywhere else, the residents against uh, overdevelopment in Middletown it seems to be a mystery organization. Then on the Facebook page, very similar name to Rage, which probably was intentional. But so uh, I, I guess I just want assurances that nothing of a public nature has been released and that um, uh, the, uh, 
there's no party signature or fingerprint on this thing that has gone out from this organization, Residents Against uh, Overdevelopment. Again, I don't, I, I'm not necessarily, object. I don't agree with the content, but you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a tough game because uh, I can handle it, but I would have a problem if it was, if it was being sourced from something other than a legitimate organization or someone who had legitimate access to those kind of emails. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wishing to be heard? No answer. Mr. Watson. Yes, sir. Yeah, my name's Don Watson, living at One Collinson Drive. I was wondering if anybody at the table is going to address Sean's um, concerns. Mr. Mercatante, I have a question for you then. Have uh, any emails been released to township committee members or political parties that you're aware of? Do you no, see all like that? I got the email over the weekend, I guess, when I came, I think. Uh, it came to my township email address. I have no idea where it came from. Yeah, it came from that email address that I'd sent it to you. It, it wasn't clear what where that was, you know, what the, what the origin of it was. No, I think that's good enough. Great, thank you. Well, well, thank you. The public wishing to be heard. Leo. Yes, sir. Uh, Leo Kasafli, uh, 121 uh, Cranberry uh, Court, uh, uh, Shady Oaks. Uh, I'm involved with the uh, the issue of uh, uh, capital improvement of, uh, of an athletic, large athletic athletic, perhaps even professional uh, level uh, uh, um, uh, athletic uh, uh, fields with adequate parking, probably running water, uh, uh, perhaps created by um, uh, pumps um, that Michael Discaccio said you would probably need two of them at one point uh, five million dollars, so it's up to three million dollars. That's what he said. I where did he say that? Uh, he said it at the September 4th meeting or whatever it was. I remember it distinctly. Uh, but at any rate, uh, it's good. I, uh, you know, uh, learning uh, repetition is the mother of learning. So here's the second repetition, first repetition after the first. Um, I see Tony Fiore is nodding his head in agreement with me. Um, so, uh, <coughs> Um, at any rate, um, uh, I'm, lastly, besides the traffic, that's a county problem and, of course, a, a, a middle town township problem. Uh, I'm also concerned about the electricity that may uh, be required to run uh, um, uh, uh, through the uh, 160 acres of land and the 85 acres of water at Stevenson Park, especially if you need any kind of uh, low-level lighting or the high-level lighting that you have at uh, Croydon, Croydon, Croydon Hall. There's no, there's no um, lights at the facility, with the exception of security. Um, well, in the Army, they, they call this rumor control, and <laughs> invariably, uh, what the rumor uh, has a basis in reality. So. Um, uh, we, you know, people can suggest something when they're conceptualizing at an initial stage, and then the strategy, excuse me, it's not the strategy, it's a tactic to withdraw it, okay? So, uh, advance and retreat, and if you go two steps forward and one step back, you, you, you advance your cause. Uh, so I, I just have, uh, 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 um, uh, I'm, I'm one concerned citizen at uh, Shady Oaks, and uh, they're, they're organizing to your uh, visit to our clubhouse, whether it be a meeting. I think it may be closed to the public because of the, uh, 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 the I think there's a capacity there, so it would be uh, the club members. But uh, um, I, I like to just start it off with uh, uh, my contribution is um, Ex-Senator Carrillo's brought to uh, the Township Committee a grant 
for uh, uh, amount of state money paid uh, $3.9 million to dredge, I didn't know at the time, but at least the, the west third of the lake. Um, and a man stood here and said, uh, my, the depth of my land was uh, 11 feet, it's, it's now 7 feet. So you have a lot of dredge matter in there, and I, I, I don't know if you've done anything, but power rake it, something like that. Uh, so real quickly, perhaps if you don't know the answer now, could you get it to me? How much of the $3.9 million is available? Well, I, can, I, I can answer, I'm sure the administrator can answer, because I was intimately involved with that. I think it was probably around the time that I may have been mayor or just before. Um, the $3.4 million reference, Mr. Mercantante. I Mr. remember Nelson. it was nine. Okay, okay three brother. nine. I'll give you three nine. Okay, but, thank um, you. If they could, they could correct me if I'm wrong, but that was something called an environmental. The New Jersey, yeah, New Jersey Environmental loan. Infrastructure Trust. Trust loan. loan. It's a loan, not a grant. It was not a grant, oh, so it's a loan. So uh, there was no grant money. We would have had to borrow at a lower interest rate to do it. And $3.9 million would have been a, to use one of your terms, a proverbial drop in the bucket to the 10 or $12 million that would have cost because DEP would not allow us to take the dredge material and leave it on said Stevenson Park to dry and then be utilized somewhere else or be spread, or spread out. They demanded that we take the wet, uh, the wet, uh, Dredge, dredge spoils or materials and ship them to potentially Saraville, if I remember. The mayor of Saraville and I got into a nice spat over this when he said he wouldn't, Middletown wouldn't dump on Saraville. Um, even though there's a dump in Saraville. There's a dump in Saraville. Um, and it would have cost something where about 10 to 12 million dollars, so that would have gotten nowhere and we would never have gotten Could to I get interrupt dumps. for a moment? So let's then let you continue. I called the same mayor, I think he was a lawyer. And he told me they had 400 acres of dump land. Mm -hmm. They were going to empty it, clean it up thoroughly, chemically, whatever it is, and they were going to put housing developments in, on the 400 Correct. acres. Correct. Right off the parkway exit. Mm -hmm. I know it very familiar. You could see it from the Driscoll Bridge. But I would tell you that these were clean spoils, in our opinion, but they wanted them trucked out. Trucking costs were to cost somewhere of 10 to $12 million range. Well, for, yeah, you know, you're talking about Mayor O'Brien. How many truckloads of 150 cubic feet of... Uh, 10 to $12 million worth. Yeah. We but bid it out. How many it trucks we bid it out. It was over $10 million. We bid it out. Well, how many trucks? 70 truckloads? Uh, no, it was, it was way more than that. Way yeah. but, but 500? But just keep in mind, uh, so what, what Sarahville is doing with their landfill is not cleaning it out. They're filling it with, with contaminated material, then they're going to cap it with clean dirt. So it's not going anywhere. It's going to stay right there. Okay. So this would have just been more fill for their site. There was no, there was no issue with that. And, but and it would have, if, if we had the money, if we had the $10 million to do it, that material so would be in Sarah Hill. At the time, if you dredged it uh, and you were able to get, uh, I think the state did not allow you to dump the dredge material outside uh, New Jersey. Is that correct? No, that's not true. No. We just couldn't put it on the Stevenson property. Uh, uh, okay. It had to be true. Uh, even so, up over. Uh, was the bridge sturdy enough to carry those uh, truckloads, the, the bridge, no, the, one, have to have the one lane bridge? You're right. The bridge now would be, but the bridge at that time, no, would not have been. We would have to that, that, put a temp, built a temporary, we talked about building a temporary Mr. bridge Mr. Gustavo, over that while... while uh, alongside it. Alongside it. Well, alongside it, over it, uh, we never got to the point of actually designing it, but there was going to be a temporary um, structure put over that bridge uh, while the uh, trucking was going on. Mr. Gustavo, well, uh, uh, I'd like to answer your second part yes, uh, after, uh, or your first part to your to your question. Again, these two fields are, were a co are a concept. Um, I understand what you're saying in terms of concept. The concept does not include lighting. I would argue again that Stevenson Park does have current irrigation. You were they were irrigating farmland. There are hundreds of acres of farmland. And also with respect to the one lane bridge, and I'm not even saying because I think there are other alternatives that may come through, and I'll speak to them and maybe my colleagues would like to. But um, with respect to the one lane bridge for a two soccer field, um, uh, two soccer fields, I challenge you to go to Lincroft Acres if you never have been there before. It's on Orchard Street. You should go. It's off Newman Spring Road to make a right. 
But you'll see our two soccer fields there. Similar to the concept, except there are lights there. There's no lights in the concept plan that we were proposing. But you will see that it's a one lane in and one lane out park for two fields. Mr. Maloney, have you ever gotten a, a, an issue with uh, the traffic coming in and out of Lincroft Acres for two fields? No, and I use it every Friday, by the way. But that notwithstanding, um, there, again, this is a concept. I look forward to meeting, I'm sure my colleagues do, with the Shady Oaks Board. I know my colleague, Mr. Perry, um, based on a, 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 an examination, may have found another place that could be an alternative in loop of Shady Oaks. That would be in the purview of a partnership with the Board of Education. So um, that would be nowhere near Shady Oaks, by the way. Uh, it would be in Belford. But um, again, we just can't create magic here, right? So we have to have that cooperation. So again, this concept is a concept. Um, doesn't mean it has to move forward, but right now it's a concept for a need. And if we identify somewhere else, which potentially we may have, we may not have, you can't, you can't just usurp property to do things, and that is our property, as it's been well documented. Hopefully we'll be able to have a great resolution to this, and um, it'll be a benign and moot point. Could I ask just one more question? I'll stay please? after the meeting. I'm happy to Leo, talk to Leo, you. Leo. Could I ask you presiding and not Tony? Uh, Ms. Mr. Fiore, could I ask just one more question? Sure. Please. Uh, I was kind of uh, really set back uh, at a meeting, and I rarely get set back at public meetings, quite frankly. Um, um, uh, it's all money and, and, and government management talk, you know, there should be nothing threatening about it unless there's something uh, out of balance, disordered and unfair. But at any rate, uh, my question is, uh, I was stunned that uh, you, Mayor Setembrino, you had a list of people and you called them up first and uh, my sense of timing was they were allowed more than five minutes as you're politely and kindly allowing me to go beyond five minutes. I appreciate it. Um, um, and uh, uh, I understand that uh, uh, some of these people uh, were more than just fathers. Uh, could you address that? Maybe I'm like a member of the Judiciary Committee in the Senate now. I'm just uh, using a question that it doesn't reveal the, the topic. I'm sorry, there were more than... They were more than just fathers. They had other occupations or interests elsewhere. In terms of their kids? What? In terms of their children? They, they were at least 20 men in a group, no children. They represented the, their, their, their children and other soccer players. And they came up, uh, maybe 10 or 12 of the 20 of them, and they each spoke as you call the name. And I. I would say, gee, I'd like to jump in into this now. And, uh, I think I tentatively raised my hand in the back of the room. I was standing, so I was far away, but I was a bit uh, seeable. And uh, so, why did you have a list like that? Uh, it's a, it, it gives me a sense as a fait complete at work here, an accomplished fact from the French. Uh, the decisions, uh, Alea Yakta S, when uh, Caesar came to the river. Uh, uh, the Rhine or the Rhone, he, he said, the irrevocable decision is gone. We're going to build a wooden bridge here to get to England. Okay, so uh, uh, Leo Yacht to S is an irreversible decision. Leo, Leo, Leo. So is there an irreversible uh, 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 agenda here? Leo. Now, with regard to the list, I have requested that the, the, the clerk with those uh, specific hearings, um, such that they weren't limited to five. Any any uh, hearing on a uh, second hearing is not limited to the. It's not, not limited to the five minutes. Could you raise your voice a little bit? I sure. Some of those hearings were not limited to five minutes. Most specifically, the one for um, you're talking about for, for Stevenson or Phillips 35. Phillips 35 was it was a uh, was an, a zoning. Uh, only ordinance that was not limited to five minutes. When we talk about the five minutes, some things are and are not limited to five minutes, number one. Number two, in order to maintain a little bit of a sense of order with regard to the speakers and the proposed speakers, uh, if you recall our meeting at 1.30 in the morning, or meeting that lasted until 1.30 in the morning, we did ask for a list. However, 
I do call this in any specific order. Uh, I asked people to sign up as they came in that wanted to speak, and similarly at the end of that list, I asked if there were anyone else that were wishing to speak as well. So there was, so I, A, I didn't create the list. The list was created by speakers that came in that night that wished to, wished to uh, speak on the subject. It was a sign-up sheet. Actually, it was in, it was in uh, well, everyone, everyone's own writing, so it was kind of difficult to read. Uh, C, it wasn't called in any, any particular order. So there was no top to bottom, bottom to top to bottom, and so forth. Um, and D, we invited any other speakers to speak at the end when I was finished with that list. So how you get a, a fait accompli or any other, other languages that you quoted, I don't, I don't understand. Okay, thank you for your, uh, the, the time, you, the extra time you gave me. I appreciate it. Great, thank you. I'll, I'll stop here. <laughs> Anyone else uh, from the public version of the right, uh, Seeing none, I uh, want to close the public and uh, close the uh, internal. Thank you, sir. Raymond Yes. Raymond Perry. Yes. Raymond Snow. Yes. Kevin Raymond Fiore. Yes. Mayor Sennon. Yes.